The Bible is God speaking to me. I am what the Word of God says I am. I can do what the Word of God says I can do. I have what the Word of God says I possess. I am a believer, not a doubter. My mind is renewed with the Word. Therefore, I'm thinking those thoughts that please my Father. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn your Bibles to James, the fourth chapter. James chapter 4. We've been going over the book of James, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, because James is the book of wisdom in the New Testament. And so we come to the conclusion, and we've talked about this even when we were studying the book of wisdom under the Old Testament, which is the book of Proverbs, we come to the conclusion that wisdom is the ability to take the knowledge of God's Word and get results with it in, practic in a practical way. So it's not enough just to quote Scripture. You've got to know how to get the Scriptures that you can quote to make it a manifestation of change in your life. So we who believe on the Lord, who believe on the Word, we are, we, we've got to be people who are focused on results. Yes. And we've got to be results-oriented. Yes. Amen? Amen? Some wonderful business person said it this way, don't ever mistake busyness for being productive. Right. Don't good. ever mistake busyness for being productive. In other words, there's some people that are just doing a lot, but they're doing a lot that's not resulting or getting results in the practical way. And so we who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we who trust in Him, should be people who walk in wisdom. For He is our wisdom. And wisdom that is from above. Now we're in James chapter 4, but let's read in verse 14 of James chapter 3. James chapter 3, verse 14, and we'll read down into chapter 4. We left off with chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 last time. James chapter 3, verse 13 says, oh, uh, Who is wise, a wise man among you? Or who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Let's read verse 13 out loud together. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Now let's stop there. James is saying you can identify wisdom, you can identify a person of wisdom, and you can identify that the person who has wisdom is going to have a certain characteristic and character trait. And that is their conversation will be skillful in the Word. A person who is filled with wisdom will not just be frothing out at the mouth and talking and allowing their mouth to just say anything. A person who really is walking in wisdom will talk right. And so we've seen in the previous verse of Scripture of that same chapter 3 about the need to pay attention to the tongue and words that come out of your mouth. They are being judged, they are being weighed, and they are directing your life. Verse 14 of James chapter 3 says, But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not. And lie not against the truth. Now, who's he talking to? He's talking to believers. He's letting the believers know, yeah, you're born again, but you can have bitter envying and strife in your heart and try not to what? And you're trying to deny it, but you're, you're denying it is not being taken sincerely because what you're saying is showing what you're doing. And so in James chapter 3, verse 14, he says, But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. In other words, don't be happy about wrongdoing. Go ahead and repent of it and get on the right track. The Lord 
Lord wants his people to get results. And getting results demands that you pay attention to words and that you be a person who is pure in heart. Because faith is a product of your heart. Faith is a spirit. And we're looking at James chapter 3, verse 14. The spirit of faith operates from your heart. And if your heart is single-minded, if your heart is pure, then you're going to get results with your faith, and your faith is released by the words of your mouth. Amen. You'll declare a thing, and it will come to pass. Amen. You'll pray, and your prayers will be answered. Amen. You're not just talking to be talking. You're talking because you know what you say will come to pass. Amen. And so therefore, James is informing us People who are Christians, but yet they have bitterness in their heart and envy and strife going on in their hearts. They are not aware that it's keeping them from getting results. Now we do know this, the Bible was not written in chapter and verses. It was added by the Bible printers for reference sake. So when we all turn to James chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 14, we recognize we should all be at the same place. But James didn't write chapter 3, chapter 4, right. chapter 1, chapter 2. No, James was just thinking and speaking and writing what the Holy Ghost had him to say. And so the whole thought from one chapter to the next chapter is one complete thought or flows together and is revelational. So don't think that, well, chapter 3 we're finished with and it doesn't have any reference to chapter 4. It has every reference to chapter 4 because it's a part of the same thought. Amen. And what he's going to be talking about is individuals who are sabotaging their faith. They're hindering the ability of God, the wisdom of God who's on the inside of them. They're stopping the wisdom of God from producing in their life. You remember how he said that a person out of their mouth comes blessings and cursings? He spoke about how that it does a well bring forth sweet water and bitter water. Well, bitter is, the, is a reference to what he's talking about here. Having bitter envy and strife in your hearts. Because whatever's in your heart is going to come forth out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. So pay attention. If you've got bitterness coming out of your mouth, if you've got envy and strife coming out of your mouth, shut it down, arrest it, grab it, and say, I'll not allow that to be so. I'm going to have sweetness come out of my mouth. I'm going to have sweetness coming out of my mouth in abundance Amen. because that's what I choose to have in my heart in abundance. Amen. You remember what we talked about years ago and some time ago, the Holy Ghost gave the title of a message that um, sour people, bitter people live sour lives. Amen. Bitter people live sour lives. They don't really enjoy life because what's in them is keeping them from having a sweet life. They say, oh no, I, nobody knows about the bitterness of my heart. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. How do they know? Because it's going to come out of your mouth. Whatever's in your heart in abundance is going to come out of your mouth. And so you can direct, you can control you can get benefits from God's word if you'll just pay attention to where your faith is. How do I know where my faith is? Listen to how you talk. Mm -hmm. All right, so James is saying in chapter 3 here, he's talking about, in verse 13, uh, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. Verse 15, this wisdom, talking about the wisdom of God, is in comparison to the wisdom of the world. Because the world has a certain wisdom. But its wisdom does not compare in a good way to the wisdom of God. Now, we're looking at verse 15 of James chapter 3, it says, this wisdom, talking about bitter and being in strife and lying against the truth, he says, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. 
For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Amen. Now, some people don't know what confusion means. Confusion is two words jammed together. Con meaning uh, against. Fusion means something that should seemingly come together. Confusion means that there's no way that you're going to get two things to come together because there's no adaptable, there's no way that they're designed to flow together. So you can't take God's word, which is good and gentle and peaceable and life-producing, you can't take God's word and then take the strife of the world and think you're going to get results with God's word. Because right. God's word is God's wisdom. And the wisdom of the world works contrary to God's wisdom, which he says then that the wisdom of the world is not from above. Mm -hmm. Now here in verse 17 of James chapter 3, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Mm -hmm. What does pure mean? Anybody know what the word pure would mean? Give me some definitions of the word pure. What? Not spotted. Okay. Holy. Holy. Clean. Clean for sure. Clean for sure. Without blemish. Could we say it this way? Pure means not contaminated. Would that be a good way to describe it? So therefore, the wisdom of the world is contaminated. Yeah filled with blemishes and spots and shot through with faults. Mm -hmm. But the wisdom that comes from God is what? Is clean. Mm -hmm. The wisdom that comes from God gets results. Mm -hmm. It's not about, see, a lot of people, <clears throat> too many people, I'll say it this way, too many people, which is I call them a lot of people, too many Christians are waiting on God to produce results. Mm -hmm. When in reality, it's their contamination that's been keeping the wisdom of God from being able to move in their lives. Mm -hmm. To produce in their lives. And, 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 and if a believer knows that it's on them and not on God, then the believer should take what? Every effort to get rid of any contamination. Anything that's coming out of my mouth that's not lining up with the seasoning of God's word, the purity of God's word, that's not coming forth with the love of God's word, it's not coming forth with the, with the gentleness of God's word, I'm kicking it out and getting rid of it, and I'm replacing it with what God said in his word. I declare that God's word will come through a vessel that is de dedicated to be pure. Amen. I choose to have a pure conversation. Amen. I choose to have a pure heart. I choose to have a, a pure mind. Yes. Not a double-minded yes. individual, but a what single-minded individual. Oh, because yes. when I take time to purify and to make sure my heart is dedicated to loving God and loving people according to His Word, then what's going to happen? Things will just start happening for me. I don't have to try to obtain, I just declare it and it comes to pass. Amen. Why? Because God is pure and if I'm godly with contentment, great gain will begin to take place in my life. Yeah. So the closer you walk with the character of God, being fruitful, you're going to allow the word of God to produce in your life. Amen. Now, I do know this, and I don't have, you don't have to turn to it, but we do know that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, there is another description of the wisdom of the world and how it works against and is not the same as the wisdom of God. Well, there's the wisdom of the world, and then there's the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God comes from above. The wisdom of the world is not coming from above. It's coming from hell. It's coming from beneath. It's coming from the earth. It's devilish. It's sensual. It is. It's confusing. It doesn't make any logical sense. It is just. It's the devil. Mm -hmm. 
unpure, contaminated. You can't even you can't get any good out of it because there's no real good in it without contamination. But the wisdom that is from God, if everybody does it, it'll be good for everybody. Amen. The wisdom of God, if everybody does what God says in God's wisdom, it will produce good for everybody. Amen. For example, not stealing. That's good. That's good for who? For everybody. Why? Because the person who stole is not walking in the wisdom of God because after they get it and they set it down, they go steal something else. Somebody climbs through their window and does what they've done and they come back disappointed. Why are they disappointed? Because they expected it to be there, but their understanding is faulty. So not stealing is a good thing. If everybody practiced that, everybody would have thriving careers and businesses. Amen. Some people don't have their own business because they haven't dealt with their own corruption. Mm -hmm. Because if they repent and got rid of the corruption, then they would have confidence that their business would succeed. Mm -hmm. But you can't rip off somebody else mm -hmm. and open up your own business thinking that your business is going to succeed. And you won't plan for growth. Why? Because you're too busy thinking somebody's going to take the growth that you get. Mm -hmm. So the wisdom that is from the earth is, is stifling. It tends to bondage. It doesn't lead a person to growing and being blessed. Why? Because it's rooted in greed and selfishness and sin. Yes. And all sin is selfish. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing to write down and don't forget. All sin is selfish. All sin is based in fear. We could say it this way. All sin then is based in selfish fear. What did we just say? All sin is based in selfish fear. So... But the wisdom that is from above is based in God's word of love and faith. Yes. So when a person walks in the wisdom of God, you're literally going to grow. You're going to prosper because you're moving in the direction that God, is, God has designed everything that comes from Him. God has designed it to prosper and grow. Yes. You don't have to go to a fig tree and demand that the fig tree give figs. Why? It's designed to bring forth figs. But when the fig tree is not producing figs, you got an issue. Why? Because it was designed to produce fruit. You don't have to scream, rich, 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 and I'm going to get out. All you got to do is what? Become holy. Walk in the light of God's word. And riches will come on you and overtake you. Amen. That's it. Why? The kingdom of God is designed to do that. Amen. And the kingdom of God will work on your behalf. Now, that doesn't mean you can't declare the fruitfulness of God's work. Or you shouldn't declare that you have an abundant harvest. You should. And, you, and it's good to do that. But you're not <coughs> doing that to try to make it happen. You're doing it because you're letting everybody know. Pay attention because it's getting ready to go down just like this. <laughs> it's getting ready to happen just like this. So when it happens, you know who's to get who's to get the credit for it? The Lord. Because you can't walk in obedience to him and not eat the good of the land. You can't walk in obedience to God and listen to his word and apply his word in your life and not have increase in your life. God's kingdom produces increase. That's what it does. So I don't have to try to become rich. Once I'm in the kingdom, I'm already declared rich. Now my actions of purity, my actions of holiness, my walk of wisdom is going to allow what's in the kingdom to get on me and operate through me and be the residue of me. That's a really, really good teaching. I'm not going after money. I'm going after Jesus. Amen. And Jesus is my wisdom. Amen. 
Amen. So since I'm going after Jesus and he's my wisdom, what's the result of my life? Prosperity. <laughs> because it comes as a result. Give my sister this. He's fine. Get going to Good. Oh, yeah, we have this guy. All right, good, good. Thank you. All right, here. You see how much water is available? <laughs> it's all over the place. Everybody just give her a whiz give her water. Call and water. Amen. <laughs> okay. So now, when you are given an opportunity and insight to walk in the knowledge of God's word, and as Dr. Price says, he says the word is like a many faceted diamond. Wherever you turn it is filled with many facets of revelation. You see different colors of the diamond by the cut of the diamond, right? Well, when you walk with the Lord even more and more and more and you're getting into the word more and more and more, you're going to see different facets of revelation and every facet of revelation is going to produce more opportunity of walking in his best. Amen. So you can't, you should never ever get bored of growing in the Word. Yeah. It's like, do you ever get bored of the many faceted diamond that gives you all these different colors? No, you wear it because you just love the fact you can't get bored from it. It seems like it's just fire in the diamond. Mm -hmm. Well, there's fire in the Word. Yeah. And if you grow in the Word, your life is going to be prosperous and you'll grow and you'll have increase and people will be like, how'd you do that? Well, technically, you just got into the word and you made your way prosperous by what? By being obedient to what you observed in the word. Amen. And because you are not repeating and going over destructive things and trying to recover always out of making tragic mistakes because you're walking in the wisdom of God. And when you walk in the wisdom of God, you're going to increase. Amen. And you won't have to keep starting over and over and over and over and over. Some people say, well, how can I really grow by getting into the Word? It's like being in, well, you know, like it is. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. But people walking outside of the Word are walking outside of wisdom. And I've seen this science experiment where they set these mouse traps all in the room. And each of these mouse traps, you know the old school ones that, that you put the cheese on it and the flip, flip, flip. Well, they put a ball on the, on the place where the cheese should be on the mouse trap. And all of the, this room had inside of it mouse traps that were on the floor. And they said when a person enters into certain environments, it's like this. There's a chain reaction. And they took a, a ball and threw it into the room. And when the room hit one of the mouse trap, it hit the mouse trap, the ball came off of it, and that ball hit another ball, and that ball hit another ball, and so it exponentially caused the whole room to be filled with all of these ping pong balls going off. Did you get the principle? It's called the chain reaction principle, which means that if a person is not walking in the wisdom of God's word, they will miss out on the blessings and release obstacles in their life and miss blessings. Whereas when you walk in the word, there's a chain reaction of blessings that will flow to you and through you. Now, because this is the way God operates. Now, I remember watching that example uh, that the scientists showed with the chain reaction of balls. It was, um, it was, it was a physics uh, lecture. And, and they, they were talking about atoms and molecules. And what that means is our bodies are comprised up of atoms and molecules. And molecules really are, every, are the composition of everything that we see physically. So if a person is going after God, then they're in a place where they don't have ca catastrophic things getting set off all the time. Like if they got a shooting in a bar down the street, that has nothing that won't affect me at all. Why not? I'm not there. Why? Well, you, you don't have to call the ambulance to, to and duck bullets and so forth? No, why? 
I'm nowhere near the cat the cat the catastrophe. Are you listening? Yes. So by walking in the word, there are things that you will never experience. Amen. <clears throat> and and the bad things you won't experience, but the good things you will experience. Amen. Why? Because the same principle of chain reaction is happening for you in the kingdom. I'll say that again. The principle of chain reaction is happening. The principle is, but instead of bad things popping off, you've got great things popping off. So you'll look up, next thing you know, you've got all this stuff happening in your life that's good. That's positive. You've increased. You've gotten further down the road. You're younger. You don't have any wrinkles. You're stressed out. You don't have a pain going on in your body. You're healthy and whole. What's going on? What's happening? It looks like you're in a chain of bubble, a hyperbaric chamber. What's going on? You are in the chain reaction of the kingdom of God. The chain reaction of the kingdom of God. But when a person is in the negative reaction of the world and the wisdom of the world instead of the wisdom of God, they're going to have stuff going off that's bad. Bitterness, envy, strife, wrong thinking, wrong approaches, people stealing from them, they're stealing, their time is wasted, their body is worn down, their mind is corrupted and thinking all kind of crazy way. They don't have any peace. They don't have any sleep. They don't never have enough money. There's just a bunch of stuff that's popping off, popping off, popping off. And then they look over and they say, well, I'm a Christian too. Yeah, you are, but you're not walking in the wisdom of God. Because chain reactions are going to happen in the world. The question is, which environment are you going to be in? See, when we're here in church, Nobody's getting cursed out here. We're not having any craziness going on in here. What's going on? You're used to an environment of peace, knowledge, blessings, light, no confusion, clear understanding, a way to get your mind focused on what's being said so your mind is not jumping everywhere. What's going on? You get used to this kind of environment, it's addictive. It's addictive. The environment of peace, you'd be like, you know, I ain't trying to have no, I'm not trying to have confusion. I'm not trying to have strife. I'm not trying to have fighting and fussing and carrying on. I'm not trying to have people envying and going after one another. I'm not trying to have a sour life. I'm too used to, I've already visited what it's like in the kingdom. And because of that, I'm going to have the kingdom operation in my life. And that's how you can say, as yes, for me and my house, we will what? We will serve the Lord. Now, put this in your notes. There's some things here. I was writing these down earlier as the Spirit of God was talking about. Turn, uh, not turn to it, but just write it down. Matthew, the 19th chapter, Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 30. Luke chapter 18, verse 18. You'll find that those examples there, and there's more of them, but this is referring to the rich man that came to Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And the man turned down the instruction that Jesus gave him. Jesus said, go, sell what you have, give to the poor, come follow me, you have treasure in heaven, we can take care of his business. And of course, what was his initial purpose for coming to Jesus? His initial purpose for coming to Jesus was he asked for, what must I do to inherit eternal life? When the man turned down the instruction of the Lord, and Jesus is the wisdom of God, where we all agree, he is our wisdom, right? And so with wisdom comes practical application of scripture so that you can have results. When the man turned away from the word of Jesus, or we can say it this way, the word or the instruction of wisdom who was embodied in the flesh, he turned down 
prosperity that was going to totally eclipse the prosperity that he already had. And he was, he was already identified as a very rich man. So much so that when Peter heard what happened because Jesus loved the man, but yet he was disappointed with the man's disappointment to obey and Peter's like, well, Lord, we left all, and we're following thee. Jesus said, nobody can turn away things for the kingdom of God. And when I say that, I'm kind of paraphrasing it now. And come up short. For in this life, you're going to have things multiplied back unto you, and you'll have the kingdom of God's blessings. A status in the kingdom. The man asked for eternal life. The way to eternal life was through Jesus. For he's the way, the truth, and the life. So then the man came to get, but because he didn't walk with wisdom, he left poor. But when, I thought you said he was very rich. He was, but he was poor because he did not take advantage of the, that which he came for. See, if you don't get what you came for, you're not leaving better off. But if you get what you came for, oh, you are definitely enriched. So he came identified as very rich, but he left leaving as a man who was poor. Why? Because you, the wisdom of God is not negotiable. The wisdom of God cannot be swayed. The wisdom of God is not established by man. The wisdom of God is from above. And where did Jesus tell this man who was considered very rich? Where did he tell him his supply would come from if he obeyed him? You would have treasure in heaven. When God is your banker, everything you do is financed. Yes. When God is your banker, you can afford to do some things. Or should I say things? <laughs> the Bible lets us know in Haggai, you can write this down, Haggai, H-A-G-G-A-I, chapter 2, verse 8. Haggai, chapter 2, verse 8. God lets us know that the gold belongs to him. Yes. Now since the gold belongs to him, you think he knows how to tell you where it is? Yeah. He certainly does. Mm -hmm. So the man walked away from the resources of the one who knows everything mm -hmm. and where all the gold is. We do know this in Matthew the 17th chapter, Matthew 17, uh, verse 24 through 27. When Peter was looking for a way to pay the taxes, yeah. Jesus told him, go fish. And the first fish you pull up, open his mouth, is going to be gold in there. You can pay the taxes with just that. Now, how do you know that? Now, look, a fish in the water, the first fish. How do you know that the fish had gold in his mouth? Because God knows where all the gold is because the gold belongs to him. So one act of obedience changed the experience of they didn't have the tax money at first, but they had the tax money and enough for not just Peter, but Jesus and whomever he had to pay taxes for. Out of one act of obedience to wisdom. See, some people miss it. They think this because you quote scripture, you get results. No, you got to be a, a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. Because James said in chapter 1, if you just hear the word and you're not doing it, then you are self-deceived. And a person who is double-minded because they hear it, but they're not doing it, it caught in the place of zero. Remember that? Positive and negative integers on the on a number line there? They end up back in the middle. 
And then they wonder, why am I not receiving increase? God is not keeping increase from you. You're just going this way, then you're going this way, then you're going this way, then you're going this way. And where you end up being is always back at center zero. And he said, let not that man think, the one who's double-minded, let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. Not that God had given. They're not taking. They're not receiving. They're not receiving it from God. Now that word receiving is very important because I can give something, but if I give you something and you don't receive it, if you don't take it with your heart of faith, if you don't take it with your hand of faith, if you don't take it and say, I possess it, it's mine, I have it now, thank you very much. If you don't take it, it's not God's fault. God says, you ask, here it is. But see, in order to take it, you got to take it with your heart, your spirit of obedience to faith. Now let's read on further because all this ties in. Peter went out and went fishing and got the gold. So let's just look at James chapter 3 and we'll look at here in verse 16 because it reads in the chapter 4. James 3 verse 16 says, For where envy and strife is, there is confusion. That means lack of cohesiveness, lack of coming together, lack of merging. And what else? Every evil work. Now James chapter 3 verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So instead of going and saying, you know what, this place is filled with strife and I can't stand it. You're supposed to be a maker of peace. Enforce peace. Make sure that peace is there. Because Satan is trying to run the program, and the Bible says, give the devil no place. You don't give him a rock. You don't give him a pebble. You don't give him a dust particle. You give the devil no place. Why? Because you're an ambassador of peace. Amen. Verse 1 of chapter 4. From whence comes wars and fightings among you. See, James is going to let them know the wars and the fighting had to come in. It wasn't in you when you got born again. So, who's letting it in? Mm -hmm. That's good. Those who are not walking in the wisdom of God. But those who are walking in the wisdom of the world, what's going on? They're bringing in yeah. strife, yeah. confusion, yeah. illogical things, non-producing results, right? Yeah. All right, so he says, from whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. All the stuff that you're trying to get, you could easily have gotten it according to Mark 11, 24. Amen. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them. But see, the only way that verse of Scripture is going to work for you is you've got to be willing to give up the wisdom of the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't walk partially in the wisdom of God, in the wisdom of the world, and think that, you know, you're going to come out with something good. You won't, because the Bible says that if you're double-minded, you will not receive. 
You're not taking it. It's offered to you. You ask for it from God. God says, you ask for wisdom. I give wisdom liberally and I break not. That means I'm not giving it to you in a confusing way. I'm giving it to you without it being knotted and kinky. I'm giving it to you where you can understand it and use it. Here, you ask for wisdom, I'm giving it to you. But they won't what? Receive. They won't receive. They won't take it. Now notice in verse 3, he bears that out. He says, now if you do ask, or when you ask, verse 3, you ask, and what? And you receive not. Didn't say that God didn't give. Right. The word receive is the operative word. Right. You ask, God answered your prayer, you just didn't take the answer. Right. Because you ask amiss, incorrectly that you may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity, deep-seated hatred with God? Yeah. Now, what's he saying? I have this room of positive, wonderful, beautiful blessings of chain reaction to get all over you. But you're going in the door of the wisdom of the world and things are popping off and everywhere you turn, craziness is happening. So what's going on? Why do you keep going in the wrong door? Why do you keep trying to find some goodies in the world? Haven't you figured it out yet that the world means you not good? Haven't you figured out yet that the world got mess going on and it's filled with booby traps and it's a bunch of lies and a bunch of hypocrisy and a bunch of unevenness and the world is filled with deception? You haven't figured that out yet? You still think that maybe there's just a little bit good in Egypt. See, I've already come to the conclusion like the Apostle Paul. Paul said... I'm crucified unto the world, and the world is crucified unto me. In other words, the world, I'm, I'm good. I'm out. I'm out. I'm, I'm not playing on that team anymore. I'm not having that program. I'm not going to get out there and act like I'm even interested in trying to get into what the world is doing. Ooh, what new thing you got going on? I don't care what y'all doing over there. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm going after God. I'm doing Jesus. Seeking first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness yeah. and all these. See, I'm not even going after stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all these things yeah. are popping off on me. Yeah. Somebody said, Well, how do I really get to the place where I walk in abundance? Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yeah. Oh, well, what do you mean? Consistently go after? Yes. Diligently go after it. What's another word for consistently, diligently doing something? Faithfully. If you're faithful, dependable, you have a habit of. That's what the Bible refers to Jesus when he was in his earthly ministry. He was habitually in the synagogue. As his habit was. As his manner of habit was. So no wonder he's faithfully in the synagogue. Yes. And the Bible says, and God spoke just to my heart just as I was coming over. He said, a faithful man shall abound in blessings. Amen. Hmm. That means it's going to pop off. You just look around and you'd be like, where all this stuff come from? All these goodies, I'm in the right place at the right time. My mind is clear. My conversation is wonderful. My body is healthy. I'm looking younger and spry. I can do stuff I used to do when I was in high school. I mean, in other words, what, what's going on, Lord? It don't look like I'm getting any older. I'm not trying to get older. I'm just walking in love, in love with you. What's happening? You've entered into that realm where the kingdom of God is starting to exude through you. And the kingdom of God, the spirit of God in you, 
quickens, makes alive your mortal body. It's the same spirit that's going to produce the resurrected physical body. Amen. But you can a head start on it mm -hmm. by allowing the spirit of God to literally come through you yeah. as you are going after the word of God. So when people say, how do you know you're going to succeed in life? I know one thing. My GPS is set on the destination of God's word. Amen. That's it. That's what I go after every day. Amen. That's what I wake up to. That's what I go to sleep with. That's what I have at lunchtime. In other words, God's word is my continual appetite. Amen. And even if I'm doing other stuff outwardly, inwardly, I'm thinking, okay, what's the word say? What does the word say? When I'm walking the dog, I'm praying in tongues and I'm thinking on scripture. When I get in the shower, I'm thinking on scripture. When I, when I go to bed at night, I'm dreaming on scripture. Ooh, Lord, that sure is good. I'm talking to the Lord when the time I pray. In other words, I live in this continual awareness of the kingdom of God and my king of kings and lord of lords. What's going on? The kingdom is rising up and through this vessel of clay. Amen. So when I come in contact with something that aligns up with the kingdom, I'm like, huh? Mm -hmm. I had to straighten that out. <laughs> sickness and disease in my presence. Oh, no, I don't have sickness. No, no, no. I'm not going to have no sickness and disease in my presence. Just stay and think that it could just hang out just the way it's going to be. Oh, no. I command healing. Amen. Jesus walked in Peter's house. His mother-in-law was laid out with a fever. Jesus laid hands on her. She got up and started cooking some food. Amen. What happened? Amen. Where you go, healing flows. Yes. Hallelujah. If there's poverty in a house where you are, because of your walking in line with the wisdom of God, what's going to happen? Prosperity will manifest in that house. Just stuff will start coming in. And people will see, oh my goodness. And just like Laban. Laban told Jacob. I know I've been blessing you got over here. I've been trying, I've been ripping you off, and I'm still getting blessed. Joseph sold as a slave, but yet Potiphar was blessed. And then he gets thrown in jail in the dungeon. And the jail is blessed. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to Pharaoh's house. And what happens? All of Egypt is blessed. Wow. And then what happens? He comes in contact with his family, and all his family gets blessed. Wow. What's going on here? When you allow the, the word to be your pursuit. See, this is, I, I, I really, really want people to get a hold of this. When the word is what you're going after, if that's the love and the delight of your life, your lifestyle will change. You ain't got to try to be rich. Riches will come on you. Amen. Amen. You don't have to try to be peaceful. Peace will exude up and out of you and impact others around you. Amen. It can put you in a dark Hold with a can, and that can will become prosperous. Mm -hmm. wow. Why? Because the kingdom of God is in you. Amen. So we're in James chapter 4, and uh, he lets you know in the latter part of verse 4, he says, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Why? Because God is not about crazy. <laughs> God's not about confusion. God's not about all that tongue wagging and murmuring and backbiting and strife and, and creating division. It don't even make any sense. Verse 5 of James chapter 4. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth where? The spirit what? That dwelleth where? In us. Could put your name there where the word us is. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Mm -hmm. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resists the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Mm -hmm. 
See, I'm not trying to run around and make stuff happen. Stuff's just going to happen because I be what I be. <laughs> what do I be? A seeker of the word of God. A man who walks in wisdom. And so when something comes in contact with this, which is going on in my heart and out of my mouth and in my thinking and in my actions, anything that's way out there and out of order, it's just going to have to be impacted by the kingdom of God that's operating in me. Amen. Verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Another way of saying submit yourself therefore to God is the, is the saying is go after the word. Yes. How do you go after God? Go after the word. Submit yourself therefore to God. Or you can put the word. Mm -hmm. Or is another what's the what's another way that the God is described? Love. Yes. God is love, correct? Yes. So go after Love. Submit yourself, therefore, to love. Yes. Submit yourself, therefore, to the love of God. Somebody yes. says, well, what about this person over here? They need help. I'm like, did you offer them a chance to come? Yeah, they just won't come. Well, you know what? The best way to show them love is you keep coming. Yeah. Well, I miss you. I don't see you no more. When are you going to spend some time with me? I love spending some time with you. Come follow me. I'm going to the, to the temple. Peter and John were on their way to the temple. And were they thinking about how to heal somebody? No. What was in them came what? Came out of them. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. What did they have in them? The name of Jesus and faith in the name and healing in the name. And they just simply acted on what they already were informed about that they possessed. Authority in the name of Jesus to deal with sickness and disease and demons and everything else, right? And it's interesting to know that after the man got his healing, he wasn't asking for no more money. You know in the beautiful gate of the temple, where Peter and John, the third chapter of Acts? Well, after the man, he was asking for alms. Alms, alms for the poor, alms for the poor. And Peter looked on him and said, look on us. Silver and gold have I number such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And grabbed him and snatched him up, and the man started walking and leaping and praising God. And when he went into the temple, he wasn't going in there saying, can a brother get a dime? Can a brother get a nickel? Can, can, I, can I get a little bit of money? No. He was too busy shouting about what money couldn't get him. He was shouting about what money couldn't get him, right. but the what? But them walking in the wisdom of God and the power of God and the knowledge of the authority in the name of Jesus, it got him what he needed. But what I'm talking about here, your life changes when you submit to the word, to the love, to the pursuit of God. Amen. That's all I needed to know. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto you. That's all, I, that's all I needed to know. When I found that verse of scripture in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When I found out that's the way God works, I'm not any longer, I'm no longer distracted. There's nothing that can cause me to be like, well, you know, maybe you need to oh, come over here and do this. Maybe you need to come over here and do that. Maybe you need to do this or that. Maybe you need to have a life quest. I'm only after one thing. And let it be known. And let it be clear. I made it in my mind. I'm going after the word. Well, you're going to be so spiritually minded, you'll be an earthly good. No, no, no. The Bible says, go after the word, and all the goods of the world will come to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have to go after the stuff. The stuff will come to me. Mm -hmm. But not 
in a way in which it's going to distract me or keep me from enjoying my pursuit of God. Because what is the delight and the enjoyment of my life? Going after the Word. Now this is the reason why I sleep with the Word in my home. I'm telling you, I got Bibles in my bathrooms. I, I got Bibles in different rooms of the house. I remember people that come to the house, they're like, man, you got a Bible almost everywhere. Because I never know when I get to itch. <laughs> Twitch. I mean, start so, hungry and angry and thinking, mm, I, 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 I need a little, a little word. <laughs> in other words, I'm always, always, always looking. Mm. Mm, I need some word. Mm, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So given the opportunity to get the word, oh, I'm so thankful. I mean, one time we, was in, <laughs> we went to China, and I had a sign that I couldn't bring a Bible with me at the time. It was the first time I we went to China. I'm like, you can't go out there teaching and preaching and nothing like that. Sign it and say you won't do it. And then we'll let you have a visa. And your visa won't last as long as your wife's visa because her profession is not ministry. She works with the airline. But you, we're going to give you just a few days. Mm -hmm. Talking about you preaching. Mm -hmm. Not having it. So I get over there in China. I love my Bibles. As I was asked to. Right? Mm -hmm. I left my Bibles here at home. And I went up to the concierge table or the, the office of the, of the hotel where we were. I'm like, is there a Bible anywhere around? See, if you got a Bible there, then it's not my fault you got a Bible there. Yeah. No, 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 no. I tried to get the Bible on my phone through the internet. All that was blocked out. Couldn't get no Bible. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then I was just going through withdrawals. You know withdrawals? <laughs> <laughs> I need a little word. I need a little word. <laughs> I told my wife, I, I, some word. I need some word. And then the Holy Ghost reminded me, oh, you got a, a, a software already loaded in the hard drive of your phone that has the Bible on it already. The blue letter Bible. Because I was trying to get it through you version. I couldn't get it through you version. Not, not all of the Bible verses that you can get from the internet. But man, I got the blue letter Bible. Yeah. And I pulled it up and I got on that. It was just like a baby on his nipple. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, this is some good milk. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that was good. That was good after that. No, what I mean is when the word is your pursuit. Yeah. Yeah. You have got permission to do things in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Your angels will work on your behalf. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your faith will produce what in the natural you couldn't do. Yeah. I mean it. You do things that people are like, you can't do that. But see, you can't be convinced of that. Why? Because you don't know you can't do it when the Bible is telling you you can do all things through the Christ. Who strengthens you. Amen. And I don't let any relationships, I don't let any fellowships, I don't let anything. I mean, people, one time people were pulling on me, well, you need to be a part of this, you need to do that, you need to run over here, you need to run over there, run over there. And I, I went to prayer about it. I'm like, Lord, all these people that I respect and love and I honor them and so forth, and, but they want me to do this and they want me to do that and they want me to do this. I've, talked, I've been in ministry almost 40 years. I mean, I, I can do a bunch of stuff. Right. And I'm walking along the waterfront there, you know, along the beach, and I'm praying in tongues. And I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because I'm being asked to do a bunch of stuff. And the Lord told me this. This is so smooth how he said it. He said, Gary, don't you give up the best mm -hmm. to be like the rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, you know it's coming from God because that's just so simple and easy to be entreated without hypocrisy. It, it's just it's easy, easily understood, yeah. full of love and full of mercy. That doesn't mean that others aren't doing what they're not supposed to do, what they're supposed to be doing. Doesn't mean that they're not doing the, what they were called to do. He's just telling me, Gary, don't give up the best to be like the rest, mm -hmm. wow. to be accepted by others. 
to be patted on the back by others, to be given awards by others, to be saying, whoa, you sure are doing great. Gary, don't give up the best to be like the rest. And when he, meant, when he said the best, I knew what he was talking about. He was talking about being faithful in what he called me to do. Yeah. And I have to quit and yeah. run out of time. To God be the glory. Let's lift our hands and let's just Salvation is the free gift that the Lord offers anyone who would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10 that with our hearts we believe unto righteousness and with our mouth confession is made unto salvation. I trust that you will believe God's word, that your faith will be in the risen Savior who came to give his life for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Would you pray with me this prayer of salvation? It's not difficult. It's very easy, but you must mean it from your heart. So repeat these words after me. Jesus, I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. With my mouth, I confess you and I receive you as my Savior. Jesus, thank you for making my heart your home. Thank you for living in me. God the Father is now my Father and the Holy Spirit has done a work in me. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and thank you for guiding my life. In Jesus' name, amen. We're here to be a blessing to you at Spirit Food Christian Center. The way this broadcast is brought to you is by people's faithful sowing and reaping as a result of God's word being given unto them. So I want to encourage you, be a part of this ministry of sowing and reaping. The Bible says, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In this ministry, we believe that man must hear the word of God. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The Bible declares, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God loves a cheerful and hilarious giver. I encourage you. Be a part of this ministry. Be hilarious in your giving and watch the Lord bring it back to you in many, many ways. In Jesus' name. You have been watching the Spirit Food Christian Center worldwide webcast online at www.myspiritfood.com. Join us for worship service each Sunday at 9.30 a.m. And be sure to check out our website for our weekly live broadcast and much, much more. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good.